Alright guys, I've had a chance to think a little more about this. Went through the schematic again and just was feeling a little bit confused about some different things. But it's amazing how when you take a night off and come think, come look at it the next day, you can kind of come up with some fresh ideas. And I took some voltages and uh, I feel like my V1 preamp tube is totally fine. The 6V6s though, the plate is fine, the cathode is fine, the uh, filaments are fine, so that leaves the screen and the control. I guess the grid, the grid and the screen, and I feel like those are not right. Something's not correct there, so I'm going to review that. I've also got a mind that I'm thinking I want to just kind of simplify some things. So this is what I'm thinking about doing. I mean, I need to review these 6v6s. I also need to review how I have them wired with the output transformer because right now you know, I've got like the ultra linear thing and I really don't understand that. So I think what I'm going to do is just rewire it as a pentode. I know how pentodes work. I've done a Fender Champ before. That 6v6 is wired as a single-ended pentode. So I'm going to wire it up like that. That'll be simpler. It'll be more straightforward. It'll be more what I'm used to. Um, then once I get the amp up and running, then maybe I can tweak it and start messing with some of those other options. Um, second, I've decided to remove the negative feedback resistor, which is uh, R13 and R4. Because I was having some weird stuff with the output... I'm just, I'm using different tubes than the other guy was using, and I just am not really certain about that negative feedback loop, so I'm going to take that out. Next, I've got right here my two inputs, quarter-inch jacks. I'm going to move these over here so that they are right next to this V1 input tube. And I'm going to, instead of, so right now I'm running a red wire here to the board. I've got these two resistors running to this part of the circuit, running over here to the tube. And that is just a very poor and inefficient way of doing things. I think maybe that's causing some of my noise, because you can see these wires are running here. You know, there's six. There's filament wiring here. There's this... I don't know if this is my cathode. It, I just am not real comfortable with all these wires kind of bouncing back and forth the way they are. So, we're going to redo that. I'm going to move these over here. And wire these two resistors. One of them goes to ground, one of them goes to the grid directly, not using the PCB. We're just going to wire them direct, point to point, so it's literally going to go here to here. I'm going to take all this output circuitry and I'm going to use a terminal strip kind of in maybe in this back area here and we're going to get rid of these these jacks I've got on the front. We're just going to wire it. Right now I've got it just wired with these cords anyways, so we're just going to get rid of that. We're going to simplify the whole thing. and I think that should hopefully get me in a better place. I feel like those are the issues that need to be tackled. So, let's take a shot at that and we'll see how we go from there. Alright guys, so I've rearranged the outputs according to this diagram. Yellow is my anode mount, white is common. So what I've done, I've installed a three-point terminal strip, looks like one of these where this middle point is grounded to the chassis via a bolt. I'm just using one of the screws that's already there for the output transformer legs. Both of the whites are being grounded at the same place. And these two yellows are each going to one of these outer terminal strips. And then I'll just take my speaker wire and solder it hot and common to each side of that as well. So hopefully we should be good to go on the output side of this output transformer. I like it that this is a much tidier location for these wires. I'm more comfortable with this being over here. It's not getting in the way and it's going to clear up space uh, to open up things for my uh, inputs to, to move over. And it's just going to make, I think it's going to be improve a lot of things going on with the build. So feeling good about this change. All right, we should be good to go. I've got my speakers here speakers out, leads wired up, yellow to the clear wire, white line, ground, white line, ground, white line, ground, 
clear wire, yellow wire. We should be good to go on this output section. I think that's really going to free up a lot of good stuff to happen over here. Okay, now for this input side, I had these four output jacks. These guys, none of these are needed anymore. These right here are my two inputs. These need to go over here. So let's do that now. All right, I got my input jacks moved. They are right next to V1. There is no more output circuitry even close to these inputs. I've got one meg resistors going from the input tab. There's also a ground tab on these input jacks. And I tested that with my multimeter looking for continuity with the chassis. And then I'm running, this one is running a wire and then the 3K grid stoppers right here, right on the on the the pin, what is that, pin seven. And then this one is actually just running point to point because it's so close from the input to pin two. So we should be good to go on the input side of this amp. All right, next I remove two resistors. These are the negative feedback resistors that are running from the plate of the 6V6 back to the plate of the preamp tube. This is R13 and R4. I just lifted them out of the circuit entirely. Uh, something about the output being really low and I just, I don't know, negative feedback sometimes give me the weebie jeebies. Again, this is something I can experiment with once I get the amp up and running. But for now, I think it makes sense to leave it out. All right. Last thing I did, I believe that I wired these as triodes. I'm sorry, as pentodes. What I want to show you guys is this. This is the 5F1 champ. Notice how this control wire right here goes down to the B plus node. There's a 10K step down resistor. Compare that with this amp where that control goes to a switch which could go to the ultra lead tab or it can go up through a 100 ohm resistor to the plate. So what I have done is reoriented, reoriented that sucker so that this is the point I'm tapping off. So this is my B plus node. It's going here. This first connection point right here is where it runs out into the filter choke and then into a filter cap. Filter choke comes back. Boom. Tap in right here. This is right before it hits the 4.7k resistor going into the next capacitor stage. We're going to tap off of that with this yellow wire right here. That's going to go here to pin 6 which is an unused pin one, two, three, four, five, six. That's running this resistor, this 470 ohm resistor, to pin four. It's also sending a second one over here, getting to pin six, tapping to this 470 ohm resistor, running also to pin four. While I'm here, I'm going to check my 6v6 pin out just to make sure that pin number six is blank and that pin number four is correct. Okay, this is telling me that pin 6 is no connection, that's good, and then pin 4 is the screen grid. That's correct, that's what I need. Okay, I think we should be alright. We're gonna give this a shot, you guys. See how it goes. Fingers crossed. See you tomorrow.